Can you believe I have two daughters around your age? Kind of scary. I have so much to fill you in on. Want to hear about our new daytime show? I'd love to. We're going to spend an hour every day celebrating life. Oh. I'm so excited. I could scream. Want to do it with me? Guys, ready? Hi, I'm Drew Barrymore, and I want to welcome you to episode one of The Making Of. We really want to bring you behind the scenes of what this year-long journey has been like for us creating this show. It's been exciting. It's been scary. It's been challenging. Um, but really, at the end of the day, it has been an opportunity that we want to realize in ways that exceed expectations. So, I think the best way to do that is to peel back the curtain and bring you in because what happens behind the scenes, I think, is sometimes even more important than what you see out in front. And my whole life has led to this! <laughs> and before 2020, we had been proceeding to make a daytime talk show. I don't think we were gonna fall totally prey to pitfalls and trappings and tropes and cliches, but I feel like the show we were making then probably does fall in that category. And because it is our responsibility to meet this moment, it was the how that was challenging. But it's like the control room's so fun. <laughs> Because you can control things. Well, you know, I like all control. Oh, I love so like halogen or a can light on top of the head. Thank yeah. you, Mitchell, yep. so much. I also realized that with a certain amount of money and a certain amount of time, you go on this sort of roller coaster ride to accomplish something. And you're working with new people and you're all getting to know each other and everybody's working, you know, at a thousand miles an hour and trying to hit every cylinder and you're high-fiving and you're staying late and you're communicating a lot. I wanted to have a lot of group meetings so that everyone was on the same page about what the tone was. As soon as it was over, I needed to know it would get us over a finish line to make the show we were really gonna make. And then it'll either be four and five or four and five. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Jerry! Yes, the sales tape is an audition. It's been a very unique life, and yet, 44 years into it, I feel more alive and more appropriate for this job than ever. I started working when I was 11 months old, and I pretty much raised myself. Sometimes for worse, sometimes for better. My journey in life hasn't been perfect, but the liberation of that is not having to pretend to be perfect. I know. <laughs> I know what it's like to be on the other side, so I know exactly what to do You're with my You're also killing guests. yourself at a thousand miles an hour um, with a group of people not knowing if it's gonna work. And I've been auditioning my whole life. Um, I, I associate rejection with a filet o fish because every time I didn't get an audition, my mom would take me for a filet o fish. <laughs> There's, you'd think that would be demoralizing, but it's kind of like the underdog and you get even more voracious about going, you know what, we have to make this work. And even if we're just trying to figure this out and get it done and we know we'll do things different in the future, we have got to make this work or there is no future. I have flown all over the country. I've met with every single sales team. I've met with most of the station groups. So everyone was calling me, congratulations. And I would have to say, it's not a done deal, which just was so awkward, but it wasn't. We'd all flown down to Miami and Armando Nunez and Steve Ocasio, who uh, had become wonderful supporters and allies and champions of this. And we had had so many dinners and so many meetings about, is this gonna happen? They ordered a 
gorgeous bottle of wine and um, that I couldn't drink because once they said that it was official, I basically was running back and forth from the bathroom having one of the biggest panic attacks I've ever had in my life. I can't really explain it. I was joking with Rich Servini. Um, I was like, I've just been the lucky recipient of um, being a part of a talk show and I, I can't talk, Rich. Like, they're gonna fire me the second they hired me. It's official, Drew Barrymore will host her own daytime talk show. It's slated to launch in the fall of next year. And Who's coming to daytime television? Okay, girl. We're a full service operation. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much work every single day to figure out and reinvent and re-spark that fire and just get down to what is worth being on the air? What are people gonna respond to? And yet, you cannot think anyone's watching. Basically said, we as CBS, you will be working here. This will be your soundstage. Um, and you will get the privilege of being in these offices right across the street. And when I walked in the office, I just started to cry because I totally had my working girl fantasy. And I just, there is something about a desk that seems like this yeah. grounding block of concrete that doesn't weigh me down, it anchors me. Because my whole life, in work has been so okay. transient and so liberating and so like much of what made me like sort of a fluid person that I am. I think I was always looking for that anchor and somehow the metaphor of a desk really felt like this anchor that I would never ever have. I am excited to not play a character, to just get to be me. Um, I'm excited to take all the things I've learned along the way and apply it to this new job where I do get to be myself. And I know that I continue to be so lucky and fortunate. And I'm just, I'm never gonna take this room for granted. I mean, cue the Carly Simon music. This is my office. <laughs> I, this was on the window. So these will be all the producer offices. This room is really special to me because this will be the executive producer's office, who's really our showrunner, Jason. Kind of how I see this process is I hosted Saturday Night Live for the first time in 1982 in New York. And I remember being in the offices. In Monday morning, you go in and you sit in the office. It's usually Lauren, it's Lauren Michaels' office. And all the cast and the writers and everybody sits on the floor. And Lauren sits at his desk and it's a small office. It's not bigger than this. It might even be smaller than this. And everybody piles in and you all feel like puppies together. So when I saw this room, it just made me think of Lauren Michaels. And Saturday Night Live really is a training ground for me. And it's so community and it's so personal. And like I said, you just feel like a pile of puppies. So this will be our Lauren Michaels' office. The World Health Organization says the risk of the virus expanding worldwide is now classified as very high. Bright lights of Hollywood are dark and the impact is epic. Here's CBS's... But then that all changed. And all of a sudden, I was positive that this was not gonna happen again um, in the second week of March. And I understood that. I mean, anyone who can see what was happening in the world and was gonna be like, oh, this show isn't going. It's like, oh my God, shut up and get some perspective. Are you kidding me? We're in a pandemic. Um, so I felt weird even feeling sad or bad or trying to mourn something that I didn't believe was really gonna happen again. As soon as it said, like, this is official, we got knocked off our feet again, as everyone did. 
So then you're kind of working again, like in that sales tape mode. Like, I think I might be putting so much into something that may never really happen. Um, but we did, and we kept going. special effects. Or was it? One host, one time. I love my kids so much. I just want to squeeze do, 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 do. Host a new daytime show. Ah! It's got my name on it, but it's all about you. The show was probably going to end. The office was closed. No one could go anywhere. The coronavirus taking a devastating toll. Confirmed cases now top 300,000. Really very, very strictly adhere to the guidelines of physical separation. We suggest that, if at all possible, you stay at home. Coronavirus is exactly like having a baby. That's exactly what it felt like when this pandemic started. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So you just stay home on lockdown, trying to survive. And you're working around the clock to support and provide life. And I honestly did not know what I was doing. We haven't even started the show, and I had a very different vision and perception of what we wanted to accomplish with this, and it certainly did not take place from my home on a digital platform. I never knew we would be launching a talk show at the same time no one will come out to go to a talk show. How do we get around that? You'd think that that would be so de-incentivizing or such a bummer. Um, it is not. It is what is happening and you deal with what is happening. We have an advantage in that we're putting ourselves together under these circumstances. We're not retrofitting for them. So we should take advantage of that. We should. I took a lot of weeks of working with everyone on our team so closely on these Brady Bunch Zooms. I know it's social distancing time, so that is incredibly challenged and we might all be here in these boxes until eternity. So. We always have to have a plan A and a plan B, um, it seems like, for everything. Maybe even a plan C. But we never gave up. We did not give in. Let's surprise people with emotionality. Let's talk, talk about how important and intelligent you're going to feel things in the show. We will surprise you with like how we are attacking everything. Um, and we're also here in the way that late night shows go, hey, you made it through the day, man, so guess what? We're gonna put you to bed and give you a reward and a treat by making you laugh and talk about the good, funny stuff in life. I can't understand why we can't start the day that way, and we will. This is really high stakes for me, and I am scared. I'm scared -less. I've like hit another wall, and I know I'll find my way out of it again. I always do. You are not gonna be left hanging. You are gonna have what you need. You're gonna have the environment you need. You're gonna have it where it needs to be, whether it's an alternate look on the set or something that's new to another location. It's gonna be where you feel good and creative and like you can handle this and feel proud of it. I really wanna figure out how to make this work. I want to connect with people to like, make someone's day lovely. Like, that's it. That's the mission we're all on for this show. I love Zoom. I have been saying, why are we not working from home more? Hi. Well, another day. With a Zoom at the top of every hour. Uh, I, yeah, and by the way, this is my third Zoom today, and it's 9 a.m. here. I feel like more people feel like they're getting the same amount of work done, they're having connections with people, they're being prolific. Things are getting done and accomplished. Talking about where we want to put cameras and, you know, how the set flow works and the design aspects of it. I am excited about people getting their quality of life. By the way, I, Bethany, I just thought that was my child. I was like, <laughs> it was like she was perfect. I sent her for a drink. <laughs> 
Isn't it great if they can do something for you? Just even avoiding 30 minutes of bumper to bumper traffic. I hate traffic. There is no question in my mind that hell is hot and it is just full of traffic. And I just go bananas. I lose all cool. So somehow like Zoom has absolved my life of all of that. And I can wear sweatpants and I just love it. But there is a time and a place for Zoom, for sure. It's never gonna replace um, what travel is meant for, which is expanding our experiences, understanding cultures, seeing different things. But for business, oh my God. If we ever go back, I I'm never going back. I don't think we do. I think we've all had a bite of the apple. Everybody gets this and business as usual will never be the same. We need you every step of the way, at every turn you have succeeded. I loved so much the page you wrote about how to shoot with all the details and particulars about how we're gonna film this. This moment has made me become someone that I never thought I could be, let alone would be, which is someone who sought out every technological advancement. We have this really interesting 2020 mechanism that I'm really thrilled to introduce you to. One of a kind virtual audience. But, you do all um, virtual, yep. you don't bring a hologram into a virtual world. It's like too many layers of distance and technology that don't even look right. I love design and so I tried to put all of it together into this new box that was sort of pretty and shiny and exciting. Us being ahead of the game and having a really elevated visual, architectural design plan and, and technological functionality uh, is gonna be crucial. How are we interacting with people? How are we bringing people into this? How does it look? I really think we've got we've got the seeds of something here. So, um, you know, excited to see what what we can build. You know, a little bit um, bigger. You know, than what we've originally talked about, and just excited to see see what we can come up with. How does our production design now become instead of? you know, bleachers for all these human beings who are not going to be there. Screens, I want big screens. I've always loved Blade Runner. When you first see whatever that place is that Ridley Scott created, I just think it's so timeless and cool. And you're like, okay, screens are the sizes of buildings. This is so compelling. So I said, we need big screens. This is the most crude drawing. But this is the screen where like, you know, said person is. Is this the worst? It's the worst drawing ever. I, it's not my skill set. And that's me. One thing I don't want to be is like coming out like a dinosaur, like from my living room. So we're going to figure this out. We do really good work when we're tasked to think differently. The outcomes sometimes are like better than if we could have had it another way. It's so impressive. It's just a total compliment to the team. If 2020 is anything, there is a modernity to this year. This historical, game-changing, life-altering year. So why shouldn't everything else fall into line like that? Why shouldn't everything take a deep look inside of itself and ask questions that clearly we were not asking before. Please welcome Drew Barrymore. I've been waiting all my life to meet you. It's been a wild ride. Can you believe I have two daughters around your age? Kind of scary. I have so much to fill you in on. Want to hear about our new daytime show? I'd love to. We're going to spend an hour every day celebrating life. Oh. I'm so excited, I could scream. Wanna do it with me? Guys ready? Everything was uncertain and I'm just like the one, even the, the show happening, I had to stop doing that 
and just get confident and say this is happening. They say it's still happening. What's it like sitting here right now in this space? It feels so good, which after five months of everyone being so forced to be uncomfortable and reevaluate everything and in some ways have a real rebirth. The thing that is the most important to know in these times is you don't need A and B scenario. You need A, B, and C scenario. Do you want to shoot this in another state? Do you want to do this from home? We're going to not be in a studio. We're going to be in a loft somewhere. You'll not have a crew. You won't have an audience. We kept hearing every single week a new revelation of what the pandemic uh, was narrowing down in our options. So with no options, how can you believe in opportunity? But we never gave up. We did not give in. Even if we have to do this entire show virtually, it should look like an expensive, like CBS juggernaut show of like, I virtually want to be there. Oh my God! <laughs> but we have something else to show you that we were thinking about. So this is sort of an adaptation of what we were doing last time that we loved. But we were thinking, what if the background is an LED screen? And then we can bring in that- Oh my God! Audience. If it's an LED screen, we can like soften the background and we can move things we don't like. And oh, we can wow. rain and we can make it, we could sort of, you know, we can do whatever we want back there eventually. Now well, I think that's what they call a drop the mic moment. <laughs> Well, you know, again, like we still have a lot of a lot. Figuring we still out. have a lot of figuring out to yeah. do, and then certainly had a lot of things I did want, and I did love, and I did want to take with me. But every single thing that we've dealt with in our path has been this incredible learning curve of how we wouldn't do it. And when you figure out how you wouldn't do something, that is when the light bulb goes on. Oh my yeah. god! I it's really nice to see you. I <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. This is so amazing. It's, it's been a little tough as far as getting things in here, but just a couple curveballs. I'm Drew. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm just trying to figure it out and I want to do it with everybody because it's much more fun that way. But I am a student and I don't know things and I don't pretend to know things. I am learning and I want to learn with people. Then this is out of a very insane production design movie. This is like Minority Report. This is, how are you? Is it okay if I? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So we just you. cover, we just cover the floor. So this is not enough. And all these here, they are trying to face. She really likes it. <laughs> And so the technological advancement that we really focused on was something that gave me a new outlook on my own professionalism because I am very bohemian and old school and I am not technological and I am very much a girl. But this moment has made me become someone that I never thought I could be, let alone would be, which is someone who sought out every technological advancement. I just want to be super proactive. I know the holographic like thing is not sustainable for a show, but I feel like there are times we might want to choose that battle. Oh, yeah. Hi, Corona team. Ooh. How's it going in our new Ooh. normal? Ooh, good. Tell me who you are and what you do. I'm Drew, and we have a new show coming, and here we are to shoot promos for it. Yeah. Big three marker.
and we're going to figure out every single modern technology that we can use to not just the show's advantage, but to modernize television. Please welcome Drew Barrymore. I've been waiting all my life to meet you. It's been a wild ride. Can you believe I have two daughters around your age? Kind of scary. I have so much to fill you in on. Want to hear about our new daytime show? I'd love to. We're going to spend an hour every day celebrating life. Oh. I'm so excited. I could scream. Want to do it with me? Guys ready? I have so much work every single day to figure out and reinvent and re-spark that fire and just get down to what is worth being on the air. What are people going to respond to? And yet, you cannot think anyone's watching. So why do you do what you do if you are not doing it thinking about what other people think? As hard as it is, at least we don't have the luxury or ability to turn away from this. We actually get to be smarter and better people by learning through this process. George Floyd, Tony McDay, Dina Pop, and so many. You know, how have we acknowledged that this is in fact unfair and that it hurts all of us? It hurts our communities. There are a lot of things happening right now. Um, a lot of anxieties, if you will. Um, with the race conversation, with coronavirus. I really feel like, especially when we're doing African-American children's books, I love my history. I'm working on two historical books right now. All this comedy that I wanted to do is not appropriate anymore. And I just went off social media and I just started writing and I got really quiet and I just felt like nobody's voice was really appropriate. And same thing with Black Lives Matter. It was just a... Everybody has to be incredibly quiet and respectful, and this is not a time to really talk about anything but the subject in front of you. And so through the making of this show, we have been continually tested on given times in these crises and in these moments and in our culture where it is time to stop talking and start listening. And when you're doing a talk show, that can be very confusing inside. But I'm glad that this has been there because it has given me a constant North Star of how to find my voice in the most respectful way. And I do think about what I say and how I say it, but ever more so is that so crucial. And we always will find our way to comedy. That's the thing, because we need it. Comedy is not frivolous. Comedy is a medicinal, drug-like thing that we need. I have to demote all of my family members. You're like my best friend now. Like, you are I think it might be one of the most transportive things we have as human beings. Um, when I'm laughing, maybe for that second everything will be okay. Maybe it's as simple as that, but that's very powerful at the same time. And maybe it just makes me know, you know what? There's good stuff here. It's all gonna be okay. I guess comedy just makes me feel like it's all gonna be okay. That's all special effects. Or was it? One host, one time. I love my kids so much. I just want to squeeze do, 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 do. Host a new daytime show. Ah! It's got my name on it, but it's all about you. Can I talk to yeah. you for a second? Can you guys shut that door? Yeah. Can someone shut that door? Yeah, here. <clears throat> um... Um, I am really struggling. With? Just, I have going on in my head about how much I dislike myself as a human being. And I just, I, this is really hard. I'm trying so hard to be on time and I just, 
I over talk and I share things that make people uncomfortable. And then everybody's like, oh, we need you on the floor. And it just, oh, I, I, I hate the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Here's the thing. And I'm going to start a talk show in, uh, I, I'm, you have landed a job because you have been being you your entire life and that's what got you this and now all you're doing is you're adjusting for this schedule and this thing so like maintaining what why you're here no 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 don't feel that okay just say i'm ready and we're going okay i'm ready and we're going here we go Woo! i have worked so hard at things because yeah. i am full of flaws Oh my God, I'm so screwed up. I'm so imperfect. Uh, I've been so broken so many times in my life. And yet none of that can be an excuse to stay that way or to be upset or angry or ever take that out on anyone else or to have that be the reason that you didn't get out of it and go to the next place. It's, it's, I just want to get it right. I just want to get it right. I want to do everything to the best of my ability we and I'm figuring back. out where we all the back. compartmentalizing We does. have your back. We're not going to let you Oh, I back. know you guys have we're my gonna, back. But we're, we're going to do it in the room with you. Okay. We're right here. Yeah. We're here for you. We're going to encourage you. When you're it. launching a we're show like this under these circumstances, it's a bit overwhelming for all of us. And I can only imagine how that feels for Drew. Um, so that day, you know, was just really the perfect example of who she is and what she's about. And it's about honesty and it's about knowing, knowing the moment and realizing that we have to live up to this moment. It's our job to keep that flow going. Like, you don't have to keep everything. I walk in here, I'm like, oh my God, seven segments, I got this, and this, and this, and this. it's like, it's overwhelming. And I'm like, and my AD, Sarah, would be like, stop. There's four stories. Here's your stories. Do your news first. Commercial break get ready for the next, it's our job to prepare you for the next beat. You don't have to know everything. You researched it, be in the moment, and it's one story at a time, it's one thought at a time. And if that thought takes you through Drew's news, so be it. She challenges all of us, and she challenged us big time to say, we can't do that show that we did last year. We can't, it's not the world has changed, we need to present things bigger, better. We need to take chances and risks. Uh, that includes going live. That includes doing virtual interviews um, and really pushing the envelope. Drew, you know what else is okay? When you make a mistake, you just keep going. People are so hung up on it has to be perfect. It really doesn't. So that whole sitting stuck in it, feeling sorry for yourself, being stifled, you know, I don't know, we don't have to be. And I know there are people who have helped me out of those times, so I know I'm capable of helping others out of those times. But when you see that you can break through and get out of them and not have it be an excuse in life to be broken, then it's just so liberating. Five thirty one, and you're still in the damn bathroom. God, Katrina. Enjoy the go. Good morning, Salsa. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it exactly? It is 8.41.42. Ha! Ah! So I guess that means I'm on time. Yes, ma'am. Ah! And this is proof that we don't stay stuck in life. And I'm so... Omar? Yeah. Ah! Omar's here! <laughs>
figure it out. It may not look pretty, but we would get there. I have to figure out life, or I'm not going to be as good of a friend as I demand of myself. You know, I don't want to do any of this in a vacuum. I, I, I since I was seven years old, I've been engaging with people out on the street and in every venue I go to my whole life. I have never lived an existence that isn't interactive with people. Go to work, I love you too. I will go to work, Don't hang thanks up on her, to I you. Uh, I love you so much. I love you so much. But I love bread too. But when she came out with like, I love bread, I would have to falling off. Go fix yourself. Live yeah. from New York. Um, well, I think it's been around eight months since we were in this office together, you and me, Omar. And um, yeah, I had my working girl moment and I had a desk. It's here, we're back in the building. We get to do this show. They're letting us do this show. I feel like we're in the fourth quarter of 2020 and everybody's trying to get in position to figure this year out. We all get to be human beings in this job. And when Jason says every Friday going into the weekend, go live your life and bring it back to the show, that is what gives me hope for everyone being happy in their job and then hopefully trying to make a show that is outward, but very personal. All right, words of wisdom to take us into the night. And who has it? I, I will give you the words of wisdom. That a brief moment of clarity says. The wisdom that have carried me through life. I'll make it super quick. I Never miss a good opportunity. And so this is the, wor the quote that I picked out. Ah, oh, that is fantastic. Baby, you'll move mountains, and will you succeed? Hello, everyone. <laughs> My words of wisdom are from Big Boy, from of Big Boy's neighborhood. When you become successful, you're going to get busy. Stay busy, but never be too busy. It's never satisfaction without stress. It's how you handle it that makes or breaks the situation. Put your good heart and your good mind into it, and you'll, you, you'll overcome the obstacles. You've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. If you're not doing what you love, you are wasting your time. Don't think outside of the box. Get rid of the box. Cowards say it can't be done. Critics say it shouldn't have been done. And creators say well done. We're all brought here for a reason. We love, we love, we love, we love, we love, we love, we love. We're doing it. This is it. Thank you for, for doing a namaste moment. Really sweet. Every morning when my grandmother would wake up and she would have an orange for breakfast, she would stop in the moment before she would peel the orange. And she would say, at this moment, this orange has not seen the light of day. And that's what our show is right now. It's the orange. We get to cherish this moment where other people haven't seen that orange that's going to be in the light of day for everyone to see. We get to treasure this, we get to hold this close to us, and then we get to peel that orange and everyone else gets to enjoy it. Nice. So that's what I got today. Thank you so much. And I couldn't. Yeah. And I know that I am the kind of person who believes you have to earn everything. So I feel lucky that we are able to start. And, you know, kind of like my life, the rest is up for me to screw up or not.